Hello and I welcome you all to World of Yours English. Now usually whenever we talk about India and China, the first thought that comes to our mind is uh obviously india is trying to catch up with china in another aspect isn't it i mean when we look at economy when we look at manufacturing sector jobs overall foreign exchange reserves it's always india trying to catch up to china somehow trying to bridge that gap that exists between the two countries but recently something very interesting happened global media reported that it was china that tried to play catch up with india it tried to equalize with india and sri lanka yet it failed in terms of geopolitical maneuvering this is a rare event where china has faltered miserably in a game where deep pockets were involved i mean if you look at china's resources the kind of forex reserves they have they should have easily outpaced india in sri lanka yet india has outmaneuvered china in sri lanka and right now even sri lankans are saying that the help that the chinese are offering is simply not as much as they are getting from the republic of india but how did that happen how did india outmuscle a country like china when it came to giving financial aid to a broke nation like sri lanka let's find out what really happened sri lanka desperately needs help right now from the international monetary fund the imf What Sri Lankan government is trying to do is they are trying to unlock 2.9 billion dollars bailout package that the IMF will provide them. But there is a requirement. The IMF has said that once Sri Lanka's economy stabilizes just enough, only then will IMF will provide the financial support to Sri Lanka. So right now, yes, Sri Lankan economy is in such a bad state that even the IMF, the doctor, is saying, "I'm not going near you." until you get better which obviously is not a very good thing for sri lanka but at the same point of time we have to acknowledge the fact that imf is a very bad economic doctor we often look at imf as a support of last resort when a country is just failing badly miserably it desperately needs something to cling on to that's when imf should come to help but in sri lanka's case imf has put forward a condition that if you want my 2.9 billion dollars then you need some financial assurances which just goes to show that IMF and perhaps even World Bank they have become outdated their policies aren't really suited for the modern world i mean in sri lanka's case look geography plays a major role both india china are interested in making sure that sri lanka stays on their side so obviously both the asian giants will come to sri lanka's aid but imagine had this been a far off landlocked african nation with no natural resources on the verge of collapse what would have happened in that case so we really need to think about this imf has really put forward a weird condition but india's foreign affairs minister dr ajay shankar he recently visited sri lanka and he assured the sri lankan government that we will help you with the imf bailout package we will help you get to the hospital we will make sure that you get a proper treatment by the so called economic doctor im and this assurance was very much welcomed in sri lanka for the longest time sri lankans thought that such an assurance would come from china but the chinese stayed silent until india had already offered its assurance only then the chinese suddenly woke up and over here i will simply say that even though the chinese have deeper pockets more resources they simply weren't proactive enough they are diplomats they are foreign affairs ministry it was pretty much you can say sleeping taking sri lanka for granted and that's where india took the lead now some of you might ask well eventually china did wake up right it wasn't as if china kept sleeping eventually they did try to play catch up with india yes they are trying but the thing is This whole competition is about winning public perception of the Sri Lankan people. It's about winning hearts in Sri Lanka, not just the government. It's about making sure that the people of Sri Lanka realize that it is India, not China, that is the real friend of their nation. So at a time when India has already given soft loans worth more than three billion dollars and additional money in grant, when I say grant, that basically means. free money that sri lanka won't really have to give back to india all this amount totals to about 4 billion dollars compare that to the chinese help what the chinese have done is simply this the total debt that china has on sri lanka is roughly around 7 to 9 billion dollars and the chinese have just said one thing that we are willing to restructure your debt that means that all right 
we might accept some late payments we might even give you some leave some room in the interest rate but in the end you will have to give us back our money we will not write off your debts and more than anyone else the sri lankans understand this fact obviously if you are not a sri lankan you won't really be all that much interested about what their debt is who they are have to pay but the ordinary citizens of sri lanka are well aware of what is happening around them because they know that these geopolitical events will impact them directly and the funny thing is that this is just the beginning of the story have you ever wondered why isn't the quad proactive regarding sri lanka i mean sri lanka is geographically part of the indo pacific quad was made to make sure that the rules based order stays intact in the indo pacific so why exactly quad mia missing in action well the reason is very simple the quad nations simply did not really consider sri lanka important enough of their attention their main focus was primarily around taiwan and japan but india is now making sure that the quad countries realize that all of us have to come together chip in some amount and make sure that we drag sri lanka out of this mess we cannot let sri lanka fail we cannot let sri lanka become an economic colony of the people's republic of china and interestingly enough In 2023 India will be hosting the Quad Summit so the leaders of Australia uh, US and Japan all of them will come to India and definitely India will aggressively raise the issue of creating some kind of a financial Quad backed initiative that can help Sri Lanka and if this happens I'm telling you if this happens this will be nothing short of a geopolitical coup this would perhaps be the first major geopolitical victory of the quad nations as a whole against china and if you are wondering when and how this help can begin well um, according to the reports i have read most probably the initial help will be in the form of food security sri lanka is facing a massive food crisis actually the entire world is facing a massive food crisis because of the ukraine russia war so the quad countries can build some kind of a corridor some kind of a mechanism to make sure that the people of sri lanka receive regular food supplies this will end up creating enormous goodwill for the pro democratic quad nations in sri lanka and it will be a great introduction of quad to the rest of the region look quad as a group exists people do sort of know about this but the group hasn't really done anything of substance for a very long time the idea of quad came into existence in around 2004 it was formed around 2007 nate then the whole initiative sort of died and then we saw a resurgence of quad in the year 2017 and since then If you really think about it it has been 5 years and Quad hasn't really done anything of global importance. Yes there were talks about vaccine manufacturing and other things but those things haven't really happened on ground yet. So the Sri Lankan crisis is actually an opportunity for the Quad nations to introduce themselves as a group to help weak countries in the Indo Pacific. And in the grand scheme of things if you think about it it has been China's plan China's obsession to reduce India's influence in the Indian Ocean. Well guess what just happened India's influence rather than reducing it has started to increase and we need to keep the momentum going so for the time being this is right now the end of the video thank you for listening and as always god bless you all